So I finally caught up in the Blue Lock manga to the point where I now have to wait patiently for new chapters to get released. True pain in other words. So I decided that before a list like this gets too complicated to make, we have to talk about who the top 10 strongest players currently are in the world of Blue Lock. Keep in mind this list isn't 100% concrete as we haven't seen some heavy hitters in a while, mainly due to the fact that we've only seen three teams play in real matches since the formation of the Neo Egoist League. Known heavy hitters like Reen and Baro may appear lower than you'd think, and it will stay like this until we see the true extent of their evolution in later chapters. Quickly before we get into the list, I wanted to preface that I will only be covering U20 players on this list, with the exception of young professional players such as Julian Loki. So don't be in the comments all like, why isn't Noel Noah number one? Where's Lavinio? Chris Prince anyone? With that out of the way, feel free to warm up your hate comments down below as I doubt you'll agree with every placement on this list. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Coming in at the number 10 spot is going to be a tie between the Chameleon, Mikage Ryo, and the King, Baro Shoei. I feel like putting Baro at number 10 will definitely bring some slander to this list, but sadly, placing him any higher than the number 10 spot is simply something I can't do right now. Baro's ability is no secret. On paper, he may be one of the best pure scorers in the series. However, his selfishness and inability to fit in an actual system hinders from becoming the best like he potentially could be. Also, we really haven't seen much of the King since his electric goal in the U20, so there's no doubt that this position is going to change over time as we see him play in another game. I understand to an extent that the same could be said about putting him on even ground with Rio. However, take Taking the most recent game into account, Ryo's evolution in physique and skill combined with the revival of him and Nagi's dynamic duo makes for one of the most dangerous all-around players that we've seen in the manga so far. Ryo is known for his all-around playstyle as he's been known to have little to no weaknesses while also not excelling at any one skill specifically. That goes completely out the window real fast as we see his new style of football, at least before him and Nagi decide to come back together, is to set himself up to score with no help from others. These skills, both old and new, rectify his position on this list. I feel like I'm making some hate for this, but Bashira cannot be denied. Since going to Spain and training underneath the world's number one dribbler, Lavinio, Bashira has managed to create one of the most unique and creative styles in the entire series. One of the best dribbles in the game, elite passing ability, somewhat of a screw loose, and a newfound ego aided Bashira greatly, as we see he quickly found himself as the starting striker for FC Barch's development team, something even Isagi couldn't do on his own team. While his unpredictability is no doubt a serious threat for anyone he comes up against, he can knock out any higher than number 9 due to his lack of diversity in his play. He can only really use his dribble to get open and in the presence of greater players he tends to become more of a side character or an afterthought to the true ace. No hate from the boy, I love him, but until we see him evolve further, he stays at number 9 on this list. He's fast as hell. Not glad that's all there is to it. Now I know there are definitely players who are more skilled, smarter, or flat out just even better than Chigiri in most facets of football. However, as we all know when it comes to speed, there is nobody faster than Chigiri. Quick side note, just in case someone wants to bring it up, I feel like Loki may be faster as he's literally called the God Sprinter. And if PXG ever plays Manchester City, I can almost predict that they're going to have a test of speed against each other. And Loki's probably going to beat him before Chigiri ends up overcoming him or becoming his new rival. Chigiri's speed is one of the biggest deciding factors no matter the opponent as his presence on the field could lead to an explosive play at any moment. However, outside the physical improvements gained through his training with Chris Prince, Chigiri is not much more than the speedster of Blue Lock. And that's not slander, I think Chigiri will be one of the best in the world by the end of the series, as he's been heavily showcased in the entire show. But until then, he's gotta stay at number 8. The only other tie I have on this list is the one I was most unsure about. Agi is somewhat of a mystery to the reader, I felt like he needed to be on this list, as he's implied to see Kaiser as somewhat of a rival to himself, even though it seems to be more of a father-daughter relationship. Sorry, Agi. He has one of the smartest soccer minds in the entire series, able to break down and thoroughly assess everyone's play styles at a rapid rate. This, along with his impressive frame and elegant touch on the ball, and a top-notch jumping ability, I'm not gonna lie, make him one of the more formidable players on Manchine City. Now, moving over to Kunigami, this was a really hard one for me. I love Kunigami and I wish that I could put him higher, but we are still yet to see the true fruits of his survival. As the only striker to survive after being sent home from Blue Lock, we see Kunigami emerge almost as a mindless machine with his mindset on nothing but scoring goals it's kind of cool but it's also 
kind of lame in my opinion we know that the goal of the training was to create a striker with the same physique as noel noah in hopes that it would lead to the birth of a japanese striker on the same level as the current world's number one we've seen that he's much more of a fucking unit than he was before but he's only managed to score when he steals goals outside of isagi desperately assisting him just to spite kaiser kunigami hasn't done much more than just be an emo boy since returning to blue lock i hope we can see him turn it around in the future but for now seven's a good spot i think This is one that I feel could easily go higher on this list. Shido is one of the first players we see enter the flow, and when he does, oh boy. Shido is probably the best scorer that we've seen thus far. It is said that he plays strictly on instinct, not listening to others, and paying little attention to his teammates as we see in basically any game he plays in. Also, this man is a legit demon he be beating the fuck out of people for no reason and then just smiles about it and spits on them and says get the fuck up Toshido each game is an 11 v 11 his team versus their team it's 1 v 21 him versus everyone else and his only purpose in life is to score a goal so you're probably curious as to why he's only number six and that comes down to a few of his downfalls while Shido may have the skill confidence and ability to score a goal all on his own it's his inability to work with others that keeps him this low hell it wasn't until he paired with the genius Atoshi Sai that Shido's skills were truly able to shine he admitted this himself to Sai, who I think he's into, but I don't know, man's a little zesty. When he's able to work with others, he is on a completely different level, and potentially could be number one. Similar to Baro, he's limited by his selfishness, and until he can get over that, he stays at number six. I have to put my personal biases aside for a second because Nagi is my personal favorite character. However, I honestly think Five is perfect for him. First things first, Nagi probably has the most potential out of anyone in the show. He has been shown to possess monstrous skills in the football pitch. The dude literally knows nothing about soccer and he's still as good as he is. We see Agi and Chris Prince attempt to educate Nagi in hopes that they could base their entire offense around him. That's how good he is right now, so imagine if he 1. had the motivation to train seriously and 2. gained any sort of soccer IQ. Despite his seemingly limitless potential, Nagi still lacks the work ethic and soccer IQ needed for him to become the clear-cut number 1. We see him seemingly surpass and defeat Isagi when he scored that absolutely insane goal against Bastard Munich, yet this doesn't last long as we see any future attempts to challenge Isagi went up in smoke. I would love to see a completely serious Nagi because I think he could 100% be in the conversation for number one, but I can't base his placement off of potential alone. I'm not a Saitama fan, so yeah, number five for Nagi. This is probably going to be one of my hottest takes in the video, but Reen is going to be in at number four. Some of you may find it absolutely fucking unacceptable that I put a certain egoist above Rin, but come on. If you read the recent chapters, you know it's the truth. Now keep in mind, this is somewhat of a guess at this point. I wouldn't be shocked in the slightest if Rin is absolutely disgusting when we see him play for PXG. I mean, he has the highest value of any other member of Blue Lock in the current time, but we haven't seen him play in a full game since his insane 1v1 against his older brother in the Japan U20 game. Isagi was the one to score, as well as the one who earned size recognition as the future number one striker in Japan. While Rin may possess the ability to be the number one right now, we sadly won't know for sure until we see him play next. Thus, he comes in at the number four spot on this list. Okay, okay, okay. Chill. I know it may be a stretch to put Isagi here, but have you not seen the Manshine City game? There's no doubt in my mind that Isagi has managed to evolve at a more rapid pace than anyone else in the series. And yeah, sure, maybe some of this is plot convenient, but when you think about it, it's not like he's just getting better. What I mean is that he's not getting physically faster or stronger as he plays. His physique is admittedly his biggest weakness and it still holds him back as we see him relent on in the re most recent chapters, even though he gained an almost godly visual prowess. Isagi's true strength is his mind. The perfect mix of football IQ, extreme egoism, and his unmatched ability to break down his opponents allow Isagi to rapidly overcome anyone in his way. He really can't outplay those around him in a one-on-one -on -one and he admits as much, but instead of focusing on his weaknesses, he is constantly striving to find a solution, and this has allowed him to devour damn near everyone in his way. Hell, he even played Chris fucking Prince, the world's number two. Obviously, this doesn't put him on the same level as Prince, but he was legit the only one who was able to stop his knuckleball. Even Kaiser, whose eyes are even better than Isagi, was unable to stop it. At the end of the day, it shouldn't come as a shock that Isagi is this high on this list i mean he is the main character and the story is rapidly progressing to the point where the players will literally be going pro following the neo egoist league his position could change at any moment and hell it could even be wrong right now but at least to me isagi is coming in at the number three spot
Okay, before we get into this, I was a lot more confident in this placement before actually scripting this video, but I'm low-key starting to second guess it. So, instead of going back on it, I'm just gonna say that 1 and 2 are interchangeable if you disagree with my final listing. There is no doubt in anybody's mind that Itoshi Sai is one of the best or the best player in the world of Blue Lock. As far as U20s go, I'm not getting carried away. He was the first true mystery player we were introduced to as we see mentions of Blue Lock sparking his interest super early on in the series, leading to the fateful encounter with his brother Reen. The current midfielder for Real Madrid's U20 team, Sai has been regarded as a genius for his entire life. He's won countless awards, he's received probably the most praise out of anyone in the entire story thus far, and hell, if it wasn't for his overwhelming presence in the U20 game, Blue Lock would have wiped out Japan with little to no effort. Sai has one of, if not the best overall kicking form in the entire series, allowing him to pass, shoot, or even handle the ball better than 99% of his opponents. Pair this with an unmatched game sense and visual prowess implied to be on the same level as Kaiser and the current Isagi, and you got yourself one dangerous motherfucker. He is a shit brother still, so at least he ain't perfect. Quick note, I would have put Sai number one if it meant not having to rewrite this script. After rereading, I do believe that he is the best overall player in Blue Lock, but I still felt like arguing the number one spot, so let's get straight into it. Like I said for the number two, I am really second guessing this choice. For anyone who's read up to the point where Kaiser's introduced, you know just how much of a bastard this dude is, and that's no pun intended. A member of the new gen World 11 and the current rival to Blue Lock's MC, Kaiser possesses one of the craziest skill sets we've seen thus far. His vision is next level, allowing him to break down the entire field and find the most successful method to scoring in any scenario, he has damn near perfect decision making and his physical skills are just as impressive. Hell, Isagi literally says that Kaiser plays his ideal version of soccer. It took everything he had to just attempt to devour Kaiser, and even now we still haven't seen him succeed. However, even if everyone's favorite egoist manages to actually devour that dickhead, there's no way you could say that he's a genuinely better player than him. And that's due to one thing, the world level weapon that Kaiser possesses, Kaiser Impact. The fastest shot swing in the entire world of soccer. Kaiser Impact has to be one of the coolest panels in the entire manga, and the aggressive art style we see every time he shoots perfectly captures the intensity of his one-of-a-kind shot. Okay, so to quickly address the elephant in the room, my reasoning for putting Kaiser over Sai is due to 1. The fact that he's the current Antag and Sai was already defeated, and 2. He managed to make it as a striker at the elite, almost pro level, a dream Sai had abandoned long ago. There's no doubt in my mind that Kaiser will slowly start to fall down the ranking on this list as we begin to showcase new higher level players and see our protagonist evolve in future arcs. However, I do believe that Kaiser deserves the top spot currently. Hell, even Noel Noah would admit he's in the current spot right now. Like I said earlier, feel free to swap the number 1 and to if you'd like, but this is my list, and right now, I'm gonna give Kaiser the number one spot. All right, that's gonna do it for today, folks. Thank you for everyone who tuned into this video, and especially those who stuck around to the end. If you agree or disagree with any of my placements, drop your list in the comments down below. I'd love to go back and forth with y'all to see who's really the best player in Blue Lock. Please consider leaving a like on this video and subscribing with post notifications turned on so that you'll never miss another video. And that's all I got for you today. Love you, boys. Take it easy.